There you go. Had the hub and everything out the way. Yeah, that's gone. You see that? That right there was on his way to lead me on the side of the road. And I could hear it clunking around in there. That's definitely gone. I'm so happy I'm doing this right now as far as changing my wheels out. But like I can say. channel um so pretty much as you see in the description this video is a little bit more work on the gs300 i know for a fact <laughs> the exhaust video should come out before this video um if you've seen the exhaust video uh if you haven't already if you haven't seen it go ahead and check the last video out before this one uh when we went under the car there was a lot of things going on um with the gs300 as far as the exhaust wise like i said it was not the best shops at all because i know a lot of people take things out of context. So I will say that again. It's not the best shops at all. It's the actually best the shop I went to. Um, they do watch my YouTube. They do follow me. So y'all pretty much seen the work that y'all, the shardy work y'all gave me. It's all good. I'm not tripping. I'm going to keep it pushing. I just, that was just kind of messed up. But anyway, as of lately, the car has been driving good. We are about to pit the uh, stock wheel. Well, they not really. They about to pit my, uh, my, my Nissan wheels back on. Um, and we're going to do some suspension work today. As far as the exhaust goes, the exhaust still sounds, it sounds a lot better, but like I said, it is droney. I do have some parts in. Um, we are going to build a custom uh, exhaust for the GS300, and I'm almost 100% sure a lot of people might get the GS300 confused with a GS400. I get some honest opinions on that. Once I put the exhaust on it, we can go from there. But in this video, we're going to be doing suspension parts. Uh, because I don't want to wind up on the ground because my ball joints drop. I've seen that too many times. I'm not trying to be that guy. Get into it. I'm going to show you guys the suspension parts I usually use. These are the same exact ones that's on my car right now. They've been on my car for almost like two years now. So I feel as though it's time to change those. Because, like I said, I shouldn't be the guy on the ground for my ball joint failure. Especially with all this rain and me daily in the car. Um, And that's another thing. Dailying your GS with these with these cars, if you're lowered, you are way more subjectable to ball joint failure just because you're pitting the suspension under a lot of fatigue. So I see a lot of times the guys will drop down, you know, in the groups or, you know, asking me personally what's the first mod they should do. And honestly, don't go modding your car until you fix the OEM parts that come on your car. Whether if you're like this is an upper control arm for a GS300. If you're going to go with aftermarket control arms, the adjustable ones, all right, cool. Pit those on before you even lower your car. Because I'm going to tell you now, a 20-year-old car, 15-year-old car is going to break. Once you lower it down, these old suspension parts and a lot of the cars we get, they're old. They're old GS300s, GS400s, GS430s. They're old. A lot of previous owners did not take care of them, or some of them did take care of them. It's just the old part that's on there. So these need to be changed out ASAP. This is the upper control arm. Is uh the ball joint is pressed in there. You can't you you can't take that ball joint out of there. This right here. This is the actual lower ball joint. A lot of times I order these ones, the ones that's uh that's closed. Because these are already pre-greased. The ones that come with the fitting on the bottom, you have to grease those. 
You had to grease those. So when you put it on, you have to get the grease gun and grease these. A lot of times with these clothes on, um, what I usually do sometimes, I would peel this back, pull this ring off, peel this back, and check and see how much grease is in it still. Sometimes, I mean, they the, the guys who put these together in the factories might not have put enough grease in it to my liking, so I would actually put my own grease in here, so that way it lasts long. That's what I did with the ones that's on the car. Same with the same with the other control mode. And I know when I get the rolling, rocking and rolling on the car, a lot of times I would forget to mention some things. But please, 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 these caster nuts, these are special nuts to these. When you take these off, do not lose this. They, and this actually comes with the cotter pins. My advice is when you take your old ones off, try to save the old cotter pins just in case you lose the lose the new cotter pins. It comes like this with the cotter with the um with the nut on it. So what you do, you take the nut off, and please don't be like me. Take that off. This comes off. This doesn't stay on. Put this on. So we're just doing two upper control arms and two low ball joints just because the rest of my suspension parts shouldn't be bad if i go in there and i see something else that's bad i will change it but today we're just going to do the upper control arms and the low ball joints because this is this is what's going to go bad just from up and down movement and everything and like i said it's like a movable part so yeah guys uh sorry for the long introduction just like to put everybody on the same page on a lot of my videos i remember somebody told me i talk too much in my videos some of the videos i talk too much maybe but with this, I like to go in a lot of detail before I get started because I will get to going and I will forget to mention some things. And I don't like to do that because I like to have everybody be able to go and work on their own car and have the same knowledge I have just from watching the video, right? So, yeah, it's cool, right? Sorry if I talk too much. Let's get out here. Let's get it going. Yep. And I forgot the suspension parts. I usually do that sometimes. Peace out, guys. Oh, shit. Oh yeah, um, so before we get it uh, started, so quick advice, quick tip. If you're going to do change your brakes or do the LS400 uh, caliber upgrades, this would be the perfect time because we actually had to take the caliber off. So definitely would be the perfect time if you're going to do that to go ahead and get those installed uh, while you're doing this. All right, so first you want to go ahead and take the caliber off. You want to take the whole complete assembly off. So the caliber and the actual caliber bracket, that's a 17. And the bolts on the back end, you won't be able to see this at all. All right. Um, what I did, if you used to don't break jobs the same way, you don't want this thing hanging. So what I did, it's two holes. One here, one here, and you just take it. Take this off. Just take it. If you did through the smaller hole. Change your brakes or anything, now would be the perfect time. So with this here, bring this one down. It's gonna be kinda in the way, but you can move it from side to side as you go, um, as you need to, as you go. But just take this. Try not to sit that on the concrete too much. That ready. So what you do with this, this is the doozy. All right, my mother said try to keep all your cotter pins. See how I did that? Just bring it out because this right here is a part of the lower ball joint if you don't know. So take this. I have no idea what size this is. We're gonna see what the 17 is looking like. These are different sizes. A lot of times I notice when it comes to these uh, tie rods and everything, they always wind up being different sizes when you're putting old ones and when you're when you putting new ones on. Even when I bought the same brand, they, it's crazy. They turn out to be different sizes. So, hit that. That bolt's done. You're supposed to have, is a tool called a pickle fork. So, you sit it here and you actually hit the pickle fork and it unwedges this from being together. But I don't got one. Um, I tend not to use those. It's just my personal preference just because a lot of times if you hit it, you will mess this boot up. So if you are trying to reuse this, it won't be reusable once you bust this boot open. So what you could do with a hammer, easy, just do hit it right here and it'll just drop as long as you got a heavy enough hammer. Bam. 
if you don't have a heavy enough hammer you can put the bolt on upside down and actually put the bolt on upside down and hit here but if you do that you run a higher chance of damaging the actual bolt and the threads so try to do it how i showed you um see these are not too bad my boot is damaged i do have another boot in the garage let's go get that all right so now we got the first boot on um it wasn't as long as the oem boot but as you see it definitely works i use the zip tie versus using these metal clips um it does come with the clips uh it's just my preference to use the zip tie just because it's easy to put on it lasts it doesn't rust and when it's time to take it off you just hit it with a razor blade and it pops off real easy this is the part number um it works as you see but like i said it is a little bit shorter like this part is supposed to be here but i mean it's covered it definitely is uh it's protecting the rack now so it won't you know no debris or anything could get up inside my rack and damage my sails all right so since that part is out of the way <laughs> we can go ahead and continue to take these ball joints and upper controls on truck upper control arm off all right so if you can see it's a bolt here should be a bolt here and one bolt and then there's a bolt you probably won't be able to see this bolt bolt here and bolt here i take this cotter pin out that's holding it unloosen that uh that bolt and I'll show you once we get to that point. But this bolt here and that bolt there should be a 17, I believe. All right, so what I did was I got the cotter pin out. Um, and I went in here, took the cotter pin and the bolt out. And what you do, you're gonna have to, so you don't cut your hand open. You can either A, take this off now, if you ever wanna do the LS caliber upgrades or whatnot, or you could just do like I did, bend it out the way. And these have these notches on here these square notches so you suppose it hit right here on the square notch and with it, it it helps it relieves pressure a lot lot easier and it gives you a flat smooth surface to knock on um this is all right to do but like i said if you had a pickle fork you can stick it here and bang on it but i always just use the hammer just because like i can if this is not too bad i will actually sit this off to the side this little ball joint just in case anything ever happens and i need an emergency and need a spare one just to make it through the week until a new one comes and i'm doing these bolts last because this actually helped held hold everything in place while i'm hitting on that oops I have no idea where my 17 went for my my good sockets, but this would definitely work. I'll sit these right here because these are gonna be the first bolts to go back on here. Alright guys, so I pretty much showed you how to do the undo the lower control arm, I mean the lower bar joint. So there's no real need to make the video longer than it should be, I figure. Um so with the upper control arm, so with the upper control arm is that cotter pin, that bolt, these two bolts right here, one, one, and two. Now I have seen when people have taken the whole upper control arm out without removing the shock, but it's just easier just to drop the shock down, move that out the way, and go ahead and get those two bolts on the rear. Um just because like i got big hands i really can't get to those bolts and plus i could use my power tools with the shock out the way so i'm gonna go ahead and get the powder pin out and we can get the work done okay got the camera set up pretty nice even though everything's in my way but hey so hit the powder pin like i said try to save these even though i got new ones i try to save the old ones just in case i lose the new ones because i have done that in the past take it just work it out I like to do is just man Boom. oh yeah look at the hole the ball joint is actually spinning in there crap that's not gonna be easy to do it's already ruined so should you Take it. So you see that uh, upper control arm is gone. Ah, got my sensor in here still. I'm tripping. 
Yeesh. About to break it. Sensor. Right there. I'm about to break that joint just now. Almost. Almost broke it, man. That's a 10. You can even undo it here, but if you undo it, debris will get in here. So what you can do, what you can do is follow the line. So this is zip tied, so I could just cut that. Unplug it like a professional. <laughs> ah, there it is. Let me pull it out. This up control. I'm not trying to quit, man. I think the ball joint in this just broke, maybe. There you go. Hub and everything out the way. Yeah, that's gone. You see that? That right there was on his way to lead me on the side of the road. And I could hear it clunking around in there. That's definitely gone. I'm so happy I'm doing this right now as far as changing my wheels out. But like I said, it was on here for two years. So, two years. That's good. Um, you want to just take the whole shock out now. Like I said, some people, some people, if you have little hands, have been able to get these bolts out without taking it off. I may be able to get to it, but let's 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 just try it once, right? Just give it a shot. Yep, that's not gonna be easy to put on doing it this way. <laughs> I'll be real honest with you. All right, so we actually got it off without taking the shock off, but I'm almost sure I can see it's not going to be easy to put that back in. All right, so we get the new one going and go from there. All right, guys, so we're actually going to try to put the new one on with the actual shock on. See how this goes. I usually take the shock off, yes, but uh, let's see if we can do it. Let's see if it's even possible. Tap this in just because the car is tilted, so the actual chassis is twisting some. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just a couple of slight taps. It might sound loud, but I didn't. I didn't hit it hard at all. Just to get everything in place. And what I usually do. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be hard. I usually stick this in the bolt hole to get everything lined up and then I stick the bolt through, but it's not going to be easy getting one in. Or you can use a screwdriver, even oil works. Definitely going to have to do a skinny screwdriver. Let's see. Seeing with the shock out the way I could have stuck the gun on it and just hit the gun and it would have fed itself in but I just want to try it this way yeah 
This is hotter than when it should be. This is way harder than what it really should be. I do one side. Got it. One side's done. This is the side that really didn't have any too much space. Because it was hard to get this part out and it's not lined up at all. Just trying to line everything up. The hammer makes it easier. Yep. Made up for my heart. Oh. Okay. <laughs> my arms are so tired right now. <laughs> Moms are so tired right now. Oh, I think we got it, bro. We got it. That's crazy. It worked. Look, it worked. Learn something new. This is way harder than taking the shock off. I'll be real honest with you. When I do the other side, I'm gonna take the shock off. <laughs> this is just, just extra work, extra stress on my arms, like my old man arms. All right, so there you have it, guys. Uh, quick in and out mission on the GS. I wasn't able to put my driver side wheel on because I got the extra tires put on the the the, the factory wheels I run. And it had a titty in the tire. So I'm not even going to put that on the car. I'm going to take the tire back to the tire shop. Let them not need another tire. Then my GS could look proper. But we just got three wheels on there today. But it's all good. Um, hopefully this video helped out a lot of people. Um, hopefully you watch it to the end. Because if you watch it to the end, I'm going to drop a jewel on you. The first person that comments in the comment section um, about... Built Alliance 2018 in the comments. I'll shoot you some free merch, free hoodie, free t-shirt, and a free sticker. Um, would be dope, which is this new design. It's like super dope, bro. So I if you drop down the comments section where you link up, I ship that out to you. Free of charge, free of charge, free of charge. So if you made it to the end of the video, drop down the comments section. The first person, Built Alliance 2018, drop down the comments section, and i get you some merch shot over to you. And thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video, guys. So yeah, until next time, I'm gonna try to straighten, try to straighten up some of this mess today. I might not even do it today. I probably just do it tomorrow. But yeah, as always, man. Thanks for checking out the station, and I'll see y'all next time.